So today I got this beautiful car and it's all the way from Japan. And I'm gonna show you a little bit uh, screenshot from the Carfax. So basically this car back in 2009, somebody bought it and it got shipped all the way to Japan. Right now we are in November, 2023 and we have this 2010 Porsche Panamera Turbo and it has only 26,000 miles. That's ridiculously low. And uh, you're probably gonna say there is a lot of Porsche Panamera outside on the street for sale everywhere. But this car is specifically unique because it's not only a low mileage car for 13 years old, right? But it is the car which went from all the way from United States to Japan and now it came back on the United States market. That's kind of interesting story about the car itself. But I want to show it to you what's going on with the car after 13 years old, 26,000 miles. There is no faded paint, there is no faded clear on the car itself. And the car itself, the whole car feeling so strong and so nice. It's nice to touch it, you know, the open the doors, those handles, the door locks, the way it's locking. And the way it looks, I mean, it is a beautiful sedan, turbo, 500 horsepower, V8 engine. Yes, it's taking a lot of gas. It is not a hybrid. It's not gonna give you good MPG, but it's still gonna give you a lot of emotions. It's still gonna give you quality and the power. This car was built back in 2009. It is cost money right now. So it's about 40,000 to buy it and own it. What you can compare to buy it for 40,000? There is a lot of cars you can buy for that kind of money, but can you buy any close close by to this car something like that like the hatchback with a lot of space in the trunk and uh, super comfortable super nice to drive and uh, huge engine under the hood and it is still porsche and it looks like i just checked the brand new trailer do i need to say that blade not good you know okay i just checked some website where people selling nice cars old one unique one you know that website so i'm not gonna tell just I'm not gonna say whatever. So I just checked the website where people sell old cars, you know, low mileage cars, nice one, new one, doesn't matter. It's still going 40,000 plus with that kind of mileage. And it's recently one car sold 2010, beige color, I think, same turbo, but 40,000 miles for 41,000. I just checked it up and it's insane. So basically this car brand new was about 130. And right now, after 13 years old, it's still worth money. So basically, it is investment. It's not going to depreciate a lot of money if you're not going to drive it over 100,000 and you're not going to abuse it. You're just going to use it. So I would say this one going to go up in the price later on, maybe five years from now or 10 years from now, because they not going to be exist, especially with low mileage. And it's kind of going to be unique because right now, if you're going to check 911 Porsche from 70s, from 80s, the price for those cars, especially if it has beige turbo, it just skyrocketing. It's uh, super expensive. You cannot touch it. I mean, there is a lot of replicas and all kinds of stuff. That's all about Porsche. That's all about Porsche history. I don't think this car gonna make like they're gonna do kind of replica on the Porsche Panamera, but the Porsche itself, it's holding the value strong. And uh, for some reason right now, people still invest in money and buying that kind of stuff. That's why even not 911, it's uh, just a Panamera, just a Panamera Turbo and it's kind of old. Maybe it's ugly uh, at one point, but what I see from the car, it's not ugly. It's just a luxury. It's, I would say it's retired luxury. You can still buy it, you can still own it and enjoy it because it is beautiful. There is a lot of technology. The car is strong itself. Like I said, all the buttons, all the clicks, I'm going to show it to you. It's still solid. It's still feeling like the quality, like the luxury, you know, like the car, you bought it so expensive and all the neighbors looking at you at this car and they saying, wow, this guy probably has money. One of the cool points about family sedan, this Porsche Panamera, we still have V8 engine and turbo, two turbos on the top of that. So if you watch my other video, if you didn't watch it, go check it out. That's about 2018 Porsche Panamera Sport Turismo, like the wagon, family wagon, right? So that car has a 4.0 engine. But as soon as I open the hood on this one, 2010 car, what I can see, 
I can see like the engine, nobody been here. Maybe for the maintenance, yes, but nobody, nobody done any work on it. But usually all the cars, old one, especially 2010, you open the hood, you see like this broken, you know, this wire, they, they try to rewire it. Uh, this hose already has some uh, aftermarket clamps and it's just mess. This car looks like it just came from the factory. And that's one of the one of the main point everybody checking when you buying the used car when you checking up open the oil filler cap so you're gonna see what's going on number one you're gonna see the sluggage if it's present or not number two you can see the head gasket uh, coming to the end or not this one is still clean there is no sluggage I can see the chains they perfectly like a brand new maybe the oil needs to be changed but what I can see inside the engine it's nice and clean that's that's gives me uh that giving me peace of mind what i'm buying for example if i want to go and check this car for myself i'm going to check it out uh see if there is any bundle you know any paint damage or whatever and after i'm going to open the hood i'm going to start it up here the engine i'm going to see if there is any leaks going on the side or this or that maybe it's sucking air maybe it's running rough or uh Oh, it's like that. It's running perfectly fine. There is no sound. There is no oil leaks. And the oil cap, as soon as I open it, I can trust the mileage on the odometer because I can see that mileage right here under the hood. Maybe just me, maybe some people not doing that. But again, if you buy a used car, always find a place who's doing the maintenance, you know, who can do the checkup for you, put the scanner, lift it up, check the suspension, you know, all the oil leaks, check the transmission because it's not cheap, it's all expensive, especially for the older car. But if you buy that kind of car as an investment, you want to keep it over the years, am I going to sell it later on for more money? I would say do so. Even if you're going to pay $300, $400 for the full checkup, it's still worth it because you're going to get peace of mind. You're going to get a lot of paperwork from that mechanic shop so it's going to save you time and money for the future and it's going to help you to sell it later on from the back of this car what i can tell there is only aftermarket part those uh exhaust tips right i think they came from japan if you know japan they kind of they kind of different i would not say they crazy or they are weird they just a little bit different uh style guys and uh I'm surprised actually this car survived in its original condition over there because there is no body kit, uh, there is no aftermarket rims on the car, uh, only the exhaust tips. That's all the tuning, that's all the modifications been at. But again, there is some screws on the side so you can take it out and uh, take them out, you know, trash it, junk it. So right here we do have a beautiful nice spoiler and the way it's opening, it's just amazing, you know, the technology. Uh, Nobody doing that. I mean, a lot of luxury sports, supercars, you know, but the family four-door car, even if it's luxury, that's super nice feature for the Porsche. The trunk area, we do have a power lift gate and we do have a lot of space inside the trunk. Even the rear seats, you can drop it and maybe you can put the Christmas tree if you want so. Uh, what about down there? So down there, we have a both sound system subwoofer we have some uh, tools for example this one and air compressor that's it we don't have a spare tire in this car because we have a glue if something gonna happen just put the glue and drive it to a tire shop so they can replace the tire oh some tools also that's cool so VW doing it for the Porsche also. So the quality, it is a quality. I mean, all the pieces, even here, there's a metal piece in the trunk area. When you just open it, you can see it because it is uh, kind of attractive aluminum piece on the top of your trunk. So means the Porsche designer or whoever made this car, they've been thinking about it. You know, each single like side or panel or any door you're opening, it's supposed to be some kind of luxury piece of something so and i think the trunk area with aluminum piece on the top of it when you open it when you can see it it gives a lot of you know uh additional information about the car itself honda toyota still not doing it 
My always big concern and big question about the four-door sedan, it doesn't matter, it's a small car or luxury, it's expensive or cheap. Can I put myself on the back and feeling myself comfortable in case I want to go somewhere and somebody else is going to drive my car? Uh, with this car, I can say yes. Number one, because I think the main designer for the Porsche Panamera, he was a tall guy who said, I want to sit on the back and I want to feel comfortable myself. Kind of, something like that. So when I open the door, the door handle, it's just nice. It feels so good. So number two, when you open the door, you can adjust it and stop it anywhere you want because we do have a, we do have a shock basically for each door. So it's not gonna, you know, like lock it at popped out like a roller. Uh, it's kind of different system. So basically you wanna, you want a parking lot, you want to open the door like that, and you want to squeeze yourself inside without thinking this door going to jump and hit the other car. This car not going to do that. Number two, the door itself, it just not super art piece of art, but the quality, the way they've been thinking, design it, you know, you close this door, you cannot even see it. When you're sitting inside the car, you cannot see it also, but only when you open the door and you are higher than the door level, you're gonna see the metal piece, chrome metal piece, what's inserted on the top of the door. Each door has the same piece. That's super cool. I mean, like I say about the trunk, the same way here, you open the door, you can see this piece. So means whoever designed it, whoever produced it, they've been thinking about all details. It's gonna be here, it's gonna be there. You know, that shock for the door, the door gonna open. So it's not like the blind build. It's been built for purpose. It's been built with smart brains, you know, like the way the way it's supposed to be, but in a luxury way. So on the back, we don't have so many options. We have a uh, cup holders, right? We do have a uh, heat uh, heated seats on the back plus the doors. We can open and lock it. One interesting thing you're not going to see it in the new cars. We do still have an ashtray. So besides the ashtray we have a cigarette lighter so you can smoke inside the car on the back seat that sounds right now not amazing it sounds right now ridiculous in even the car production car producers factory whatever whoever producing and designing the cars right now they're not doing it you're not going to find the ashtray especially on the back of the car but back in 20 then Porsche Panamera, they've been thinking about the consumers, they've been thinking about the people who's gonna drive the car, who's gonna sit in the back, and they might gonna wanna smoke. So if they wanna smoke, let's make let's make them ashtray so they can smoke and enjoy themselves, cigarette, and the ride in this car. So while I'm sitting in the back, I was sitting in the front without adjusting the seat. I can jump and I can be it's okay comfortable i understand where i'm going i understand what i'm doing it's not the suv but it is i am comfortable the seat the seat pretty much white and uh, the leather feeling good plus i have a heater in case of something like cold weather so it's a nice materials everywhere so it is a killer's go right and all the porsche they do have it on the left side and it's kind of comfortable it's kind of cool it is a sport feature so basically everybody knows that right they put the lock on the left side so you can jump in the car and start it up you can start it before you you know you sit in the car that's the whole idea of the key on the left side in the Porsche I am a six feet tall guy and uh, I'm easily sitting on the back of the car how I'm feeling myself when I'm sitting behind the steering wheel So when I jump in behind the steering wheel, I'm feeling myself so comfortable in all the buttons, I can reach it easily. So I can start the car right away. This beautiful red cluster telling you it is a turbo. So it means give me more RPM, go to 7,000 RPM and I'm going to be fine. And you're going to be okay also. So while you're sitting inside the car, there is a lot of different things what are going to bring your attention at. So number one, in the middle, we have that huge kind of uh, central console with a lot of different buttons. It's not fill out till the end. So there is a lot of different probably options you might gonna put, but we do have an active rear spoiler. Uh, we do have a heated seats, not cooled seats. We have a sport mode, uh, active suspension. We can lift it up and take the 
traction control off. But this one in the middle, the shifter for the transmission, it just insanely cool. There is a uh, there is a plastic pieces looks like chrome. It looks just cool. Plus Porsche always put in that PDK uh, sign on transmission means there is a PDK transmission. PDK it's a Porsche dual. Blah, blah, blah. There is some uh, German word for the transmission audio stereo system in this car basically what's happened that's happened before in my other cars what's from japan so when the car came all the way from united states to japan they have a different frequency frequency for their radio stations so they basically had to change it and when they install they they own uh, frequency uh, stereo audio unit they threw original one away and when the car, somebody bought it from the auction, not somebody, actually, I know the guy who bought it. When they, he got it from the auction in Japan and brought it back to the United States, he replaced the screen back again to the one meets US standard because the one from Japan, you cannot use it here as a radio at all. It's kind of uh, upgraded, I would say. It's maybe a little bit much better on the, on the different features uh, if you're going to compare a 2010 original one, but we still have a backup camera here. We still have a navigation working, but it's not original. It's not Porsche. Maybe that's, I would say, concern kind of not plus, maybe more as a minus. But same time, it's cool. You can even watch the YouTube from this thing. From the original one, you cannot. So, number two, we have a cup holders, not only in the middle, we do have a cup holders on the uh, passenger side. And it's been taken, like, 911 has exactly the same thing. Is it practical? Honestly, have no idea. i never been driving a lot of time on a passenger seat with cups I cannot put anywhere. Right there in the glove box, we do have some space for a lot of different small things the middle armrest it's kind of not the big uh not this i mean it's like a box you know you can put the charges you maybe can put your glasses there or the keys and that's it we have an outlet we do have a cigarette lighter and the ashtray again looks like somebody smoked inside this car or try to light it up that's the sign of that thing so, like I said, right now, it's really hard to find any ashtray in a newer car, but this one still exists. And I think it's going to be history and some people are going to appreciate it. It's like, you know, you you taking a flight somewhere between the states or between the continents, doesn't matter. So you jump in an airplane and sometimes you might going to see an armrest, there is an ashtray. That Boeing or whatever you're flying on, it's been from 70s, from 90s, when the people been allowed to smoke uh, during the flight. That sounds like crazy i mean right now you cannot you cannot find something like that maybe on the private jet only the cluster the steering wheel i would say the steering wheel a little bit big if it would be a little bit smaller it would be much much nicer we do have a power steering column we can adjust the four ways you know back forward up and down the red cluster itself is just insane and when you start up the car and that original sound of the exhaust it's gonna tell you right away you're not driving a uh, regular family four-door sedan you're driving something else and something else is gonna come to you as soon as you're gonna hit the road and step punch the gas pedal that's just insanely cool so what about the quality for 2010 porsche panamera the quality it's like i say it is insane all the buttons they are working great you know that clicks here and there, the shifter for transmission with metal piece on the top of it, chrome piece, it's just cool. But besides that middle console right there, we do have a controller on the top. So we have a Patronics on and off. We do have a light adjustment and the sunroof. And the way they design it on the top and on the bottom, it still looks so cool after 15 years, 14 years, whatever the first car came on in the market back in 2009, right now 2020. So it's 14 years uh, for this beautiful Porsche Panamera on the market. Still exists and it's still super cool. So all the buttons on the steering wheel, they so solid. Like like I say, they still clicking. You know, you can, you can spin those wheels and the shifters. Puddle shifting for the transmission is just insanely cool. 
when you're sitting right here behind the steering wheel, you see that sign turbo and you can feel those clicks. You know, you can hear them. It's just something else. You're like, let me drive it. Let me drive it right now. I cannot wait anymore. Let me start it up and let's go for a drive. That's what we're going to do right now. We're going to drive it a little bit. And I mean, I drove it many times before. It handled so good, like perfect, like, like perfect. Even if it's going to be two more people sitting on the back, it's still going to be perfect because the suspension, we do have an air suspension, we can lift it up, but same time it is adjustable. So you can basically go on sport mode and suspension is gonna be tight as you want it. So the car itself, feeling like it has 26,000 miles only. The transmission that PDK, uh, Porsche, uh, whatever, uh, transmission, it feels like not automatic. It feels like more dual clutch transmission, like a Ford Focus, for example. If you draw one, if you never draw one, try, try it out. It feels like something, you know, releasing, something touching, and it's kind of, kind of smooth. But the shifting, super fast. It's super smooth. It's shifting the gears like it was a manual transmission, but looks like somebody didn't even use the clutch. They just changed the gear so fast you cannot even feel it like i say in my opinion the steering wheel it's a little bit off what it's supposed to be for that kind of sport car because it is a porsche turbo for the turbo porsche panamera i think my suggestion would be like a little bit smaller wheel itself but it's sitting perfectly you can you can handle it nicely and it is kind of comfortable. So we do have a moonroof open and it's kind of right now, not windy, but it's kind of noisy inside the car, maybe a little bit, but as soon as I'll close the moonroof, it's going to be nice and clean. It's going to be no sound. The brakes in this car, they insane. It is a Brembo on the front. We do have a six piston Brembo brakes on each wheel. On the back, we have a four, four piston brake calipers. And it's a Brembo also. So for your information, if you didn't know before, for example, Subaru uh, WRX STI has four pistons on the front and they super and super good for that car. So basically we do have a Subaru WRX STI brakes on the back of this car. On the front, they just huge. Means you're gonna be more than uh, safe to drive it on a high speed and if your brakes not shaking not making noise you have kind of safety feature from the high speed you can stop the car easily you're not gonna get any problems with that i never heard about the porsche panamera getting the problems of the brake system or with abs or some any other stuff yes there is a problems with the timing chain and uh, sometimes the phasers itself going bad. But again, all the problems coming from the poor maintenance of the car. Not the poor maintenance of the car, that's a rear spoiler. The spoiler is just super cool. I'm, like I say, I'm not remember any other regular luxury or not luxury sedan has that kind of spoiler open and closing. But sometimes Porsche get in the problems with that too. And most of the time, the problems I had with newer one or older one, doesn't matter, that's basically calibration. So what's happened when the battery going bad, you're replacing the battery, you put a new one, you have to recalibrate it. You have to You have to just do the calibration for your rear spoiler and you're gonna be fine. Sometimes it's getting stuck open or closed or maybe there is a lot of dirt, you have to clean it up, but it's not the big deal. Uh, transmission, it's pretty good. I mean, again, needs some adjustment, needs some, you know, maintenance calibration because the clutch, it's warning out. So you have to do not the calibration, uh, kind of relearning for the transmission. And that's it. You're going to be good. So it's basically going to adjust uh, the size of the clutch, whatever is worn out right now. And that's it. So guys, thank you so much for watching it. It was beautiful 2010 Panamera Turbo. I like it so much. Please put some thumbs up, put some comments below, you like it or not. So would you buy this car for 40,000 right now? And would you keep it for like next five, 10 years and see what's gonna happen with the price? But same time, while you're keeping it, you can enjoy it and drive it every day. And you're gonna be so happy you bought this car, believe me or not. It's 
it's really good choice and you, if you have some spare money you want to buy it as a second car just go ahead find one and buy it